Good evening and we're live. We just wait for people to join us. It takes a little bit of time for um, Facebook to actually catch up. But um, how are you doing, Lois? I'm doing well, thank you very much. That's cool. And tonight we have Bob Hunt. So how are Hi, you, Bob? Yeah. I'm very well, thank you. How are you two? I'm doing all right, yeah. yeah good. Yeah. Um, so sorry that Sally Ann couldn't join us tonight. But, yeah, um, it's a shame. Next time, maybe next time, mate. Oh, definitely, yeah, because, um, like, I just need to tell everyone, um, you're the reason that I was, I did my first, like, show. You actually, you contacted me out the blue, you and Sally Ann did, and hmm. said, oh, would you like to be, would you like to talk to us about being on a show? And I thought, oh, okay then. So um, I was actually camping at the time in Wales. I didn't yeah. get very bad internet. And uh, yeah, just sitting outside my tent, nice sunny day, uh, middle of nowhere, really, just near the sea, lovely place. And um, yeah, I just got bombarded with loads of questions, one at a time from you two. Well, and, that had to uh, be done. Yeah, that's it. And uh, now I sort of present my own show, and yeah, it's all good. And there you, you go, see, we one, one all bad, was it? No, I kind of blame you two, really. In all fairness. <laughs> <laughs> so, hi, Heidi Spice. I hope you're right. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mention you in my book because, it, you know, it's part of the story. It's brilliant. Yeah. That's very good. Because it's lovely. I look what forward you to reading it then. Oh, bless Thank you. I'm you it. finishing it, in all fairness. <laughs> <laughs> so, you had a beautiful setup as well because you presented. Um, what show did you present? Spirit and the Paranormal? Spirit and the Paranormal. We keep Spirit it real paranormal events, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, we had a lovely sofa and you just have guests either in the studio or on live. And it was brilliant. And you also met Trini Lee Nicholas there as well. And yes. I've become good friends with him since then. So, hi, Anne. Yeah. Hi, Anne. Drew. Don't hear so much from Drew these days. I, I, mind you, I've sort of... We've only got the one account between us now, so yeah. Whereas we used to have two, and it was a lot easier for me to jump around doing all the sorts of things. Now we've only got the one, so yeah. I'll catch up with Drew at some point. Yeah, that's it. it yeah, he's just it. Some it sort of comes and goes, sort of thing. But yeah, he's he seems to be doing fine, so that's all good. Yeah, I see. He does his own talk shows now, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Well. Yeah, he does. Yeah, I've, he does. I've, I've kind of watched one or two of them. Um, two, one or two shows is actually actually quite good. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to catch up with him because last time I spoke to him, he just had the baby. So that's how long ago it was. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's about yeah. me. Yeah, isn't it now? Yeah, yeah. That's good. yeah. Could have even been before COVID. I'm not sure. Oh, I don't know. My God. Hey, <laughs> what's your time before COVID? It's mad, isn't it? Totally yeah, is. flies by, flies by. So, yeah. where, did, where did the paranormal actually start for you, Bev? Um, so, oh. when was your first experience? Right, when I, this is strange because I look at it now and um, going back, because I'm quite old, so it was old school upbringing, and I was ill, and my mum put me up to bed, and it was it was dark, so it must have been winter time, so probably about six o'clock. And there was no TV in the bedroom in them days. You just went up, you had a little portable radio, and that was it. That's all you had. Yeah. Um, and it was the old days, and this is how long ago I was. Radio 1 would finish about half past six, seven, and it would swap to Radio 2. Well, even at my age then of six or seven, Radio 2 music seemed really old, you know what I mean? And I remember thinking, yeah, and I remember thinking, like, this music's like really old style. And with that, there was um, an outline of a little old lady with a hunchback walk through the door of my bedroom into the bedroom, walk around as if it was doing something and then walk back out, back yeah. out through the door, you know, not open the door, it actually went through it. Um, yeah, so that's what really got, caught my attention in that, though, obviously. And then um, Radio Luxembourg. You know, I was too young for that. 
<laughs> I, used to, I used to listen to Radio Caroline. Yeah, that's how. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm just going to sit here in silence because I don't want to make you guys. Because I'm a spring chicken, so I'm just like sitting here <laughs> amused listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think Radio Caroline was when I was about ten or eleven. So I remember listening to that, but yeah, yeah that time. So that was the start, and then wow. with our mum's house, there was things happening that I would explain as like like you did all the stairs creak all the way down from the top to the bottom, and I, would, I always say to my dad, "Oh, here comes Mrs. H," because that's what we call that, and he'd say, "Oh, don't be stupid, it's just the house settling." And with that, the living room door would open. As you say, it's reason the bottom stairs and the door would open. So I, to me, would always be interested in the paranormal from that, even though my mum always said I was stupid. Um, My dad would try and explain it off as normal, but it put me on that path. And then from there, I started buying magazines. Um, There was one that was out at the time, I think it was The Unexplained or something, that would talk about everything really from ufos and aliens right through to human combustion so oh yeah yeah. Okay. yeah just put me on that path that it just got me interested and then here i am still here now a whole lifetime later still doing it still chasing around looking for proof so. oh that's brilliant were you scared how did you feel the very first time it made me a bit jumpy yeah um, but then when you're living in it, you sort of get used to it. Do you know what I mean? You're used to the, yeah. the stairs creaking and the doors opening and, you know, it just becomes part of life, doesn't it? Yeah. Did you talk to her? I did as I grew up. Yeah. At that time, I didn't. It was just like, oh, it underneath the Oh, covers. yeah, not straight away. No. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and from there it just seemed to grow and it just seemed like every house I went in, there seemed to be something going on, you know? Well, okay, so do you call yourself sensitive then? Oh, yeah, Sally can make me cry a bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, Sally always says, look, if we're sat in a room and then all the hairs on one side would go up, to say, oh, and here comes the ghost detector, you know there's someone coming when Bob's like that. So, yeah, I don't know. They seem to react to what's in the atmosphere, I suppose. Yeah, because it seems like they're sort of drawn to you, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you know, it's weird because we, I was with a group and we'd had so much proof that we started going to spiritualist churches to look for more evidence, thinking they would have the answers more than we did. And you'd sit in the circles and people go, oh, I want to give you a message. And the people there go, I'm not surprised the amount of energy you've got. So I don't know. I've never really understood it. And just live with it and go with it, don't you? That's brilliant. So Eileen Murray, it's a bit like in my granny's house, rocking chair, rocking, empty doors open and shut. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we never had a rocking chair. We were at that posh, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just had a posh room at my grand and granddad's and the chairs we weren't allowed to sit on it, apart from at Christmas. But we used to be yeah. in that room. And, yeah. Um, so you're very sensitive then. So we have to be careful. Don't want See? any tears then, do we? It's not just Sally picks on me. It's Heidi as well. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she sat with her cat balls out now. Oh, what do you think of cat balls then? Do you know what? When we first were introduced to them, I thought it was a load of rubbish, but we've had so much proof of them that we can't deny them anymore. Mm. You know, there's something, and we were filming them very closely going, well, they, they must move to set them off. They don't move. They don't move, not they even a move. fraction. They just, yeah, it's just weird. That. I've yeah. got you, Matt. When I first heard the cat balls, I just laughed. Because I thought yeah. it was made up, and like Bob, I I didn't believe in them either. But I think more than that, I'm going out in investigations, and the more that I'm actually sitting there and experiencing cat balls, the more I'm actually getting into them. Um, and Jacqueline got me my very first cat ball, so yeah, yeah that, that, that's like my so proud, so yeah. proud moment. Yeah, it's funny, you know, we were um talking to someone who's fairly new to the game the other day, and he said, "I want to get some cat balls." I said, "Well, fine, go on eBay," but 
Don't yeah. put paranormal in there because yeah, you're paying extra ten, fifteen. Yeah. 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 Oh, I know. If you put paranormal, that's that prices go sky high. Don't they just? You know, it's just normal run of the mill things like cat balls, and you can add a tenner to it without even thinking about it. Yeah, it's like anything paranormal, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and then some of them are... Um... <laughs> and, and it's funny. Pardon? It's a name that's funny. Cat balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah, that. The, the, cat, the cat didn't think it was funny. Well, yeah, I've made it back well. at because I brought it home and the first thing I did was obviously I'm fascinated, right? Cause she loves lights. Anything with lights, she'll chase put it on and I rolled it towards her and she freaked and she ran away from it and then she came back to look at it, pawed it and because it lit up again she sort of jumped back from it and I was like that. <laughs> you, well it's safe to say you, it'll be safe for you then because you don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah it's funny you know we've got some out all the time in the house and um, yeah. there's some up on the shelf and we had some not very nice phone calls around you know, before Christmas, about that time. And uh, they started flashing. And Sally was mentioning a person's name. And every time she mentioned a name, this cat will flash. So um, with that, it's like, is that a coincidence? So we like the phone, cut the phone call off, started calling out the names, and it was responding to the names. So, you, know, you really can't deny them in the end. It just becomes a bit weird, doesn't it? Yeah, it is strange. Like, you see some paranormal pages and they're going, don't put cat balls on. But why not? You know, what proves that anything actually works? There is none. There is none. It doesn't matter what you've got. It, none of it really is proven, is it? Because we don't understand what the ghost is. So how can you prove that what you've got is actually finding ghosts if you don't know what they are? Yeah, because I, I, t I do use apps sometimes. and Everyone goes to rubbish, but I know the developer. And yeah. I know, well, the, the tech, <laughs> it's been described how he does it, you know, and it's not a word bank. So how do relevant words come out on demand? Well, look at, look at the night we went out, Jacqueline, with the paranormal footprints last season. It was talking to us back in Scottish. That, mm -hmm. that to me, was, like, mind-blowing because I was like, wow, you know, how, I know how the device is obviously made. Um and it's made with all English voices. Now, for that to come back to me in Scottish, that was quite, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah do you know what? Every now and then they throw something in to completely confuse it, don't they? That's right. But the thing is, like, there's there's different apps. They're designed by the same person. I use Brian Holloway apps. And um, it was one designed for the Team Spirit Paranormal, which we were using. So Leslie's team are from um, Sheffield Doncaster Way. Okay. But then they're coming out with Scottish accents, the Scottish voices. So, well, that's certainly not what's gone in there. No. And it's just no. tiny snippets of a voice as well. So when you get yeah. all the words and sentences, you know. You yeah, uh, know, to me, we would we look at it like ITC will be the proof if there is anything. Yeah. If there's any way of proving it, I mean, because you put a photo out now. And you oh. know yourself, you've got a decent computer, you can do anything to that photo. That's right, yeah. If you put a even a dictaphone now, because you can't see if there's anybody else there on an EVP, people dismiss them. But when you're going live and you're having a conversation on the radio, which <laughs> is actually answering your questions, and there's no, you know, the logical thing says, if you've got a radio scanning the frequencies, there has to be music. Yeah. Somewhere along them frequencies, there's going to be bits of music played. But one of the things we do ask is to cut the music. So if you're a spirit and not just a coincidence, we're asking a question, coincidentally getting the right answers, if you're a spirit, cut all the music. And once they can do that, then you know what you're playing with. And it's, uh, I've, I've never it, asked that. It's interesting. Give it a go. I mean, if they yeah. can cut all their music... If they can cut all music out, then you know they're quite a powerful spirit because they're taking over the radio waves rather than yeah, just you right. riding in on them, if you know what I mean. I went to a 1940s tunnels. Um, there's an old factory near me, and they did a bomb shelter there. So I went down there, and then um, 
the SB7, it played um, a 1960s song. And it, it kind of got stuck on a radio channel, but it were underground. Yeah. So the connection would have been quite dodgy anyway. And of all yeah. the songs, it was something which kind of was relevant for the person in there who would have been live in the 60s. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. And it's really crazy. It doesn't mean anything. But you, you, it's very rare that you can listen to the radio on the SB 7s You wouldn't use it as a radio, would you? No, and because it, it if, it's, if it's scanning, it, should be, it shouldn't be stopping anyway. It should just keep going. Yeah, I, I just switched it on, so it just got stuck. So that's before it actually scanned. But the minute I switched it on, it just came to that. And I didn't yeah. ever have it on as a radio. I've always had it on as a scanner, apart from that specific time. And it's just odd. Um, you know, if it's relevant to the, the personal spirit that's there, then you have to give it a little bit of credence, don't you? It's, um, you do, yeah, because, you know, what 60s music, well, you, you don't hear it on the radio that often, and it's certainly not a channel that I listen to, but, yeah. <laughs> I think what's yeah. always fascinated me is, you know, when I was out with an old team, is the fact that we, we had our um, Russian journalist that came out with us because she was doing an article across the world about paranormal teams and just paranormal in general and I think what always fascinated me was when she done an EVP and she spoke in Russian and the answer was back that, yeah. in English yeah and yeah. I, I think it was I think she had asked something so simple was like what was the colour of something or that and it came back with the answer and I think that always fascinated me to think if somebody's approaching these spirits in a different language and then managing to understand that and answer back in English. I think that well, fascinated me. Like the, it was the logistics Bob, I think, that fascinated me as though do they actually understand what she's saying? Is is that uh, you know what I mean, no Bob? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a shame Sally's not here because she her because her um background is spiritual. Yeah. Whereas she... mine's more mine's more paranormal. Um She's always explained that to me that when you're on the other side, there is no language. You you're multi language. You can just understand everything and you can reply in everything. So it's um, yeah. I'm assuming if you, if you're on that side and someone speaks to you in Russian, you're still going to know what they're saying. Yeah, and I think like sometimes like I've been told that a spirit guy kind of translates things as well. Yeah, there is that. So, you know, if you do get somebody and you are overseas, then the spirit guide like. I get. I don't know what's happening with my mediumship. It's a bit mad at the minute, but um, I get images. But then, yeah. if you get a name, it, it is. Yeah, it could be in any language if it's a name, couldn't it? You know the. Yeah, yeah. Image, I, mean, so. I think Sally's the only one I've heard of that we were. Um, she was bringing someone through, and and she asked for the name of the spirit coming through, and they actually wrote it up in a box so that it was written down for her to read. And, I've, you know, normally I think most people get an image and, or, say, a person of the same name so that you know that name. But this was actually written down, and it was like, I've never no. never come across that no. so far. I'm sure there's someone out there who's done it, but... Yeah, that, that's it. You get so much, like, evidence, and some of it's just different or unique to you. Like, yeah. I, I went to... Um, well, where did I go? Whitby. And we went to a castle up there. And it was like somebody was walking in front of me because when you walk on the grass, it springs down. Yeah. And I was standing in a particular spot and the grass was springing up as if somebody had stepped on it. And it was like cool. somebody was walking around in front of me and people don't think to look 100% around them at everything. And we tried no. to capture it on the live, but it was so mad. And we all saw yeah. it. But it was hard to catch on the live, obviously. Yeah, so you don't want you don't, you don't, you've never got the camera in the right place, have you? No, <laughs> that's right. There. It was a phone, so it wasn't kind of picking it up that well. But it it's just, the, the evidence is mad, isn't it? It can be. And like you say, it, it seems to be different in different places. So it's not like you can go like, oh, we're going to go here and we're going to get all EVPs or we're going to go there and we're going to catch someone walking about because different days you get different evidence from the same place and you're doing exactly the same things but it's completely different yeah uh, i've got, I, a question. got yeah. an interesting question here then if our if our soul meets our loved ones in heaven and we're reunited 
How does it work with spirits? In what way? What do you mean? Yeah, I think I think I think the loved ones are around us to protect us, and they're like trying to look after us through life. And then I think that they just try and talk to us as well. So I think some do. I mean, I've had some. Fine, don't they? Yeah, I've had some strange things, and I think probably family are always around you anyway because of that love bond always like they want to know what you're up to they want to see your life how it's developing and if you're getting things wrong they you know they've got to try and help you through that somehow some people don't work some people do and um i don't know with spirits what normal spirits from other places yeah yeah it, it, was, they're all tied to your experiences aren't they because i mean if you think about it logically um if you're interested in say photography and there's a spirit that's really been interested in photography all of its life then maybe it would link with you to try and push you in the right directions yeah it could do yeah, it, it's just it, it is mad but I, um See, so you've got Susan Williams asking how you smell colours, but that must be a way that you're given the communication. And it, it's odd, but nothing is cut and dried within the spiritual realm. No, so it's not. It's not. And it just, like we said there, you know, you, what you're trained to do one day may work, the next day it may be something completely different. And yeah. it's almost, you know, I've, I've had it explained to me by more than one medium that it's like they work one way with you until you totally understand that way and then they'll completely flip it and throw you on something a totally different tangent. So you yeah. have to start all over again and relearn, you know. It's um I mean as for smelling colours, I, I I have no idea. I, yeah. How would, you, sure. how would you smell a colour? I don't know that. Unless it's like a violet and you smell pollen palm of violets. I don't know. I don't I, I don't yeah. know. Lewis? I never liked this sweeties. <laughs> <laughs> never yeah. was. Yeah. yeah no. But what do you think then? Do you think that you've shown different things, Lois, and things change along your path? I do. I do believe that's funny enough. At a conversation last night I had with somebody, and we were talking about, I was saying, obviously, experiences I've had and the things that I've came away with, and I don't understand where it comes out. It just happens. And you know, they said the same thing. They say that, you know, that you do get thrown obstacles like this, but I think it's to make you better, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's the whole sense of, I love the challenge. I love, as Bob explains, you know, you, you learn one way, you get flipped, and you've got to learn another way. I love that continuously learning. Yeah. It, it, it is so intriguing. So we've got um, Angela Whitehouse. So it makes one wonder if poltergeists were bad people in life. What I don't, do you think about poltergeists then? Lois and then Bob. Yeah. I don't think poltergeists are bad. I think sometimes it could be mischievous. But people all, all, like, automatically presume poltergeist demons. It's, it's all automatic that they think it's a demon and it's like it could be you know i've i've had it myself experiences like one experience i had in the house was that i used to shut my i used to live in a tent house and it used to like i used to shut my big cupboard doors i'd go away and i could even go down the stairs go back up and they'd be open and it was not like i had the windows open or the, there was wind coming in or anything like that these doors were tight shut so I, I believe that polar guys are just mischievous. They just love throwing that element. Of, ha, ha, look what I can do! They start mm -hmm. flinging things about. I don't think that obviously that they're they're there to be bad, but then again, it could be flipped, and it could be somebody that's maybe been bad to somebody, or somebody doesn't like something, and that's when the polar guy starts. But I don't believe that. There should be a connection between poltergeists and demons. Oops. That's a poltergeist, yeah. isn't it, Bob? <laughs> uh, <laughs> See, that was a poltergeist there. Yeah. Um, 
maybe I've been blessed working with Sally because we've it's funny we went, we met someone in Craig Noss who So my belief in demons is not that great. I just think, okay, right. we've, we've look, got we've, all, we've all, we've all, pardon? We've got a dodgy signal at the moment. We've got a slight tech issue. Just hoping it's Ooh. coming back. Yeah. So anyway. Um, we might be fine, yeah, we're back. Well, I carry on, yeah. Yeah. Um, his explanation for us not seeing anything is that Sally works so high vi um, frequency and vibrations that, it's easier for the good. So if you, he explained it as a graph, the lower negative energies at the bottom, humans in the middle, and the higher energies at the top. So if you're working on a good vibration, it's easier for the good ones to come down than the bad ones have got further to go to reach you. So they don't. Wow. Um, obviously, then on the flip side of that is if you're in a bad place and with low energy, low frequency, it's easier to get dragged down than it is for the top ones to pull you up. So it's a bit of a bugger. Um, with poltergeist, we've always found that it's been someone trying to get your attention. They're trying to talk to you and they can't, and you're not hearing them. So they're doing things to get you to get someone to talk to them. Now, a lot of times you found it was family members. They've got a strong message to bring. So granddad wants to come through. Can't You can't hear him. So it will start playing up. And then you get a medium in to talk to him, and then you get the message over. Yeah, that's cool. Because I went yeah. to my friends, and I was supposed to be learning a script for a panto. So what I did, I staged it. We got a picture of wine, and we got a picture of a script. So we took a photo of us two in the script just to make out we were doing it, but we weren't. We're drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and I put the wine glass down, just got the photo, and the wine glass just tipped. And there's no reason for it. It was flat on the table, no logical reason for it to tip. But when it tipped, when it landed on the table, the shape actually looked, my, looked like my dog, which was weird as well. But, you know, that was just paradalia, maybe something like that. But it was weird. But then I actually picked up on a gentleman. Yeah. I actually, I actually got a message through, yeah, which is fantastic. Because I think that's the first time I've been round to my mates and actually picked something up. Because I don't, tell, well, I didn't tend to much then. And it was just Did it take to put the wine away and get on with your work? We <laughs> 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 just doing well then. It's like, wow, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, well, we we cut off for a bit because I was just trying to find out who it was and what the issue, you know, what why he's yeah. coming through and stuff. And I found out who he was, and it's actually a friend of her mum's. So, we, oh, right, so okay. We got all the information, then took it to her mum. So, yeah. Yeah, happens, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, we used Very a couple odd. of years back. We had a um, spiritual cafe where we used to do everything. We we would put on during the daytime. It'd just be Sally sat there uh, giving an odd reading, selling cakes and coffee. But oh. in the evenings there would be a different class every night. There would be everything from druids and witchcraft through to crystals and singing bowls. There was everything in there. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, but we had some pop guys activity in there, and we also had things like um, direct voice. So you just sat there, and there'd be someone talking, even though there's nobody there. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. it also made sense of what we were talking about at the time. They were joining in the conversation. Wow! And it was a late, yeah, it was a very. And I'm, I'm convinced it's because we've done something every day of a spiritual nature, and it's completely different every day. Every day, you know, you went for everything from paranormal classes, um, like I say, through to a witchcraft class, through the druids, and everything really crystals. We had Reiki, every type of activity that people wanted us to put on, we put on for it. Oh, that's wonderful! Yeah, I no, want to live in a place like that. You know, where, where you can go and learn sort of different things. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. the hard part is it's like because you are become a calf or whatever, you still have to make enough money to pay that rent all the time. Right. And, of course yeah, you and it, it's very, very difficult to keep it going. Yeah. But, you know, when you come up to the COVID situation and everything else mm. that was going on at the time, it was just 
it got yeah. you know we, we moved away from that and bumped in with um, um, Richard at SPTV for a yeah. while. Yeah, and and we're just going to do a live show with them actually. Oh, that's brilliant! I watched six that. Of, six of November that is. It's um, oh, cool. up past nine. I think we're going live. It's a, um, a community hall, which I was trying to explain to the team. If you look at it, you'd think it looks like quite a modern building and nothing really going on there. But the okay. the staff and the members of the community there are all saying there's you know, things going missing, then turning back up, and there's certain things happening. So. We're going to go in and do a little live one. Do you think it's down to the land? It could be. I don't know until I get there. I don't, I've never well, been yeah, there. Well, yeah, first. Yeah. So. That's right. That sounds intriguing. But, yeah, yeah I'll definitely try and share on Paranormal Path. Yeah. Yeah. Please well, do, yeah. You know, because that's what the pa – like, this is a page, obviously, but I've got a group Paranormal Path as well. So it's for where people just share share lives on to, you know, just so yeah. that people can see – anyone really you know and do what people yeah are do you know what i did look look that today or yesterday trying to find the advert for this and it was so far down there were so many live groups and clicks yeah. and comments i was like oh my word yeah can you even find it, it? Yeah. yeah i removed certain ones where like there's certain well three big names and yeah you know i, I like to have serious investigations on there rather than yeah, <laughs> yeah, but we don't want drama, do we? <laughs> There's enough of that anyway on a sort of day to day basis in the paranormal. So, Angela Whitehouse, uh, her parents had a poltergeist when she was a child. They had messed with her Ouija board. My late dad didn't believe in anything until one night he got lifted off the bed and thrown to the floor. Who's a big man who soon let mum bring the spirituals in to cleanse her house. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And yeah. yes, spirit, spirit can do that. Well, apparently they've never lifted me up yet, so maybe I've just been. Not me, but no. my, my friend, my friend, um, he you know had I see him quite frequently. He's he's seen table lift and he oh, saw this, things, yeah, 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 and he saw nobody's touching it, and um, and he saw a guy um, on a stairway just having a go at spirit, and he just. Yeah, <laughs> got forced down the stairs rather abruptly. But yeah, yes. <laughs> so, uh, he wasn't impressed yeah. with that, but it would have been funny to watch, wouldn't it? It's funny that it's bringing up Weezer boards. Um, do you use them? Yeah, it's just like anything else to me. I haven't got a problem yeah. with them. I've, uh, I've yet to try one. I must admit, I've yet to try one. Um... You're joking. No, seriously, I've, I've never ever done it, and it's not because it, it's not because of the, this mass media or if, if you get a Ouija board, you get attachments. I've just never ever done it. Don't get me wrong. I, I would rather do it with people that are sensible than people yeah. that are non-sensible. Um, so I wouldn't. It's one of the things like um, I would I would really really love to try, you know. But again it comes back down to media films tv shows um you know this wild belief that and i probably will get hate mail for it but as it comes down to this this belief that you know ouija boards are bad you get bad spirits bad attachments i mean you watch like paranormal activity and things like this and the ouija board goes in fire and it's, it's just like yeah. kind of those things, you know and it's like anything, and I'm sure yourself, Bob, you, you've seen it in groups where people have posted up that they've done an allergy board, and oh my god, they've broke through this, same um, this yeah. demon, this spirit, and it's bad, and you know, and everybody jumps and tappy, mm -hmm. burn the bury it at the right door, you know, it's one of these things, but you know what, what I always say is it's your intent with it, if you tend to use it with good cause. Yeah then you should get good cause back if you intend yeah. to, to be like messing about with it because you're drunk or you get bored mm -hmm. and you might try to see if it hang me then that's where it goes wrong yeah do you know what it takes I've done a, a, a talk on Ouija boards a few years back okay. and part of my research into it was Hollywood yeah. And the very first film that included a Ouija board was a cartoon and it was done as a bit of a prank and it was funny. Everything else since 
has been a horror story with demons coming out of the Ouija board. So mm. I understand people's thoughts on the Ouija board, but it's just not real. You know, yeah, let's be fair. It's totally, it's totally down to media, and it's the same as, it you is, know, yeah. it, it's one of my bugbearers, right, is why people want to join the paranormal. People want to join the paranormal, and no offence to, I said this <laughs> to Andy, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no offence to, you know, Andy or that, that does go shows or things like that, but, you know, all comes down to, like, people presume that, you know, they see go shows and they see the things happening and again it comes down to films again and that that they see activity all the time and then when they're out on an actual investigation now you know it yourself Bob it's probably happened to yourself you can oh. sit you know five six seven eight hours with absolutely nothing and then yeah. you get the people that come along that go why is it not happening and you're thinking <laughs> you know, that, this is what happens you can go out some nights and get you know very little could get some yeah. or you could we had, um, nothing we were out the other saturday actually and heidi was with us and we done a museum that everything it just seemed really quiet wherever you were and it's only when you got home and then started watching the film and you would hear a voice wow. or you know heidi picked up a very first evp and it was just so there was things going on but you didn't hear it with your ears. You didn't see what was going on in the background. It's only when you check your footage and you suddenly start, hang on, what's that? What's that bang? No one heard that at the time. Who's is that voice? That There's nobody that's there that actually said that. And that's brilliant. So you're there and you think you've got nothing, but when you go back and you all start putting your evidence together the next day or over the next week, you start to realise just how much was there. Yeah. Do you think we expect too much? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because like the K2 going off, you go, oh, okay. But like somebody's making an effort to do that as long yeah. as you've ruled out the obvious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the trouble, isn't it? I mean, it's quite <laughs> With those, it's easy. Someone's forgot to put their phone on the airplane yeah. mode or something like that. But, you know, I think Lewis said it on it there with the TV programs and you've got, Zach Packers running around with everything's a demon and they're all going to die yeah, and, uh, yep. and all that sort of thing. People, and there was someone on there on that Saturday. It's his very first investigation. And he said to me, I just want to see a ghost. Yeah. I said, well, you probably won't see anything at all. That's just <laughs> the way the paranormal works. But, yeah. you know, he got so intrigued by what was happening around him. Yeah. But now he's totally hooked on it. He's like, I want to go out and buy a camera. I want to do this. I'm going to book oh, that. I want to book on that one. So when you get hooked, it's terrible, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> it really is. You don't uh, realise how much money you're going to spend, do you? Oh, I over that, late nights, see if I don't shopping. get out, I'm crab it. I don't know about yours too, but I see if I don't get out for long periods of time, I get crab it because it's like the paranormal sweats. I really want to get out. I want to get on yeah. the field, you know, why? Yeah, COVID was an absolute nightmare, wasn't it? She said, um, oh, killed everything. You know, and I'm still finding it now. You're, um, it's still struggling to pick up again at the moment. It's getting there slowly, but it is struggling. Yeah. You know, it's um, COVID hard work. So much, isn't it? Yeah. So I, I guess another six months if they suddenly go, oh yeah, COVID's gone. Everyone will want to get back out again. But at the yeah. moment, it's but. Actually, to be fair, it ain't been bad for us because we've made a decision to pull away from large events and go into smaller ones. Lovely. Yeah. To make it look, you know, we've done one at a um, uh, 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 hospital in Gosport where we literally had a team leader in each of the four locations and two guests. Lovely. And the guests moved around. So they moved, they worked with each of the team leaders and each of the mediums that were there and saw something different, how people different worked, you know? It's because uh, normally it'd be there's eight, you stick with that team leader, you stick with that medium. And off you yeah. go for the night. This is a little bit different, just two. So if anything's happening, you can notice it a bit easier. And yeah. you work with all different styles of that because everyone brings different things to the game, don't they? Of course they do, yeah. And also if you've only got three of you, then maybe two of them aren't shuffling with a coat yeah because yeah. you're guaranteed to be in a room with eight ten people no matter how you say be quiet 
Oh, God, it doesn't happen. Yeah. I mean, the worst one is when people don't even realise they've done it. Yeah. You know, because you'll be there doing an EVP and someone just moves a foot and they don't know they've moved the foot. They just, just move it. You just want to, oh, God. It's but like, you come yeah. back that EVP and go like, I never heard anybody. That's someone's walking. Did you hear that? You know what I mean? It's um, yeah. easy uh, done. Oh, it is, isn't it? And like the photos as well, like the number on Facebook. Oh, look, there's a person in the back of the photo. Well, it could be a person. Oh, there wasn't anyone there. Are you sure? You know, because yeah. you just don't know, do you? And oh no, and that's the issue yeah. with photo evidence, isn't it? Really, oh, it's not only that; they're also so easy to fake, aren't they? Roger, yeah. You know, so I've, I've I've actually got about three photos. Uh, one was taken of two were actually taken of me, and one was actually I took a series of three at Warwick Castle, and one of the photos when you're scanning on um the laptop you put your sd card in and the third one was different it looked like there was a figure in the background and i've had a person check um kareem was sort of checked the uh, the exit de exit details and stuff and yeah but i, I don't yeah. know to say i would i was stuck behind a rope in the warwick castle i know that when i on the walk round, i was generally behind everybody hanging back to get the photos, nobody was in front of me, and it's daylight, so I don't know. <laughs> Things um, happen, don't they? I mean, you never will, No, the thing is, though, there's so much money to be made out of faking photos. Oh. And there's someone down in this area, that's all I say. I'm not, oh, we God. know exactly the program that's been used. We know how he's done it. But it ends up on national telly. Oh, you know, no. they go, when they go in, like, the 50 best ghost photos in England, and you go, like, oh, oh no, no. not that one. Do you know what I mean? It's um, so no, fake. Yeah. But what do you do? You know, it, people want to see. So if you put something in there, what people want to see, they're going to like it, aren't they? Yeah, that's the that's problem. The, you, they are trying too hard, and they're doing it all the wrong ways. They're trying to... You know, I know it's about keeping people interested in that and keeping it, you know, fresh and things like that. But to go to that level, I just I don't agree with it at all. Just be real, just be yourself. You know, what? Uh, if you don't, uh, get, if you don't the trouble is, it's, it's... yeah, there's no money to be made though, is there? If you're real, you know, it's like we've never went out to make money. We've never. Some companies do. It's their life, isn't it? It's, it's what they live on. We've just done enough to cover us to be able to do things that otherwise you wouldn't be able to afford to. But, yeah. um, you know, if you can put things out there that are fake and people start believing it, you're going to make a lot of money and all of a sudden you're going to be invited to America and people are going to pay you to stay in these highly haunted houses and I don't know who's right, who's wrong, really. Do you yeah. want to do it? to actually yeah. prove or do you want to make money it's we only do it for the proof I, I just be true to myself you know and um i go out if i pick something up mediumistically which for some reason i am all of a sudden i'll just write it down yeah and then yeah. i'll just put it out on a report and even though like what happened at, at the weekend which seemed a bit far-fetched to me i've written it down so that if somebody else goes like years later and they go oh god i pulled him through you yeah. know, that's, yeah. that's all I want to do. Just post it. It's it's my evidence. People can say, yeah, you made whatever, you know, it's what I got. And yeah. like I, I did um, a talk at Man's, um, I was invited to do a talk at Parafest um, at Skegness. And I spoke about this specific venue, Robin Hood experience. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And um, I mentioned something, and I went on to tell a story about, yes, the area. And I, I won't go into it because um, Bob's actually going to the Robin Hood experience, so I'm not, I'm not actually going to say anything because I don't want to spoil it either. So, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, you, you get evidence. So like when Bob goes, I'm like, I want Bob, Bob and Sally Ann to come back on this show afterwards to say what they get and then we can compare notes on the line yeah sounds good to me yeah because yeah, i really want to go back there as well 
because yeah but you know yourself and and obviously lewis mm -hmm. the same you can go there tomorrow and meet a completely different spirit you may be in just slightly different mood and different atmosphere it just completely changes every time doesn't it um <laughs> so not Dana, <laughs> <laughs> um, i'm not sure because i'm going to a place called grassley hall on saturday night and um, similar ones come through there, but then you do get different ones. And yeah. the strangest thing I did, I went around the woods first. And um, we sort of said to, went to the woods and said, oh, do you want to come back with us? And something turned up at Gresley Hall. So somebody modern met the spirits of this location. And then this guy started talking in a Jamaican accent and he got overshadowed by the person we took back. <laughs> so that was Lovely. really funny, yeah. And it yeah. got a bit heavy, and it had to be taken downstairs and sorted out because it just got ridiculous. But yeah, he, the spirit just came into like this historical place, and it's like, where am I? You know? Yeah, as you would. And the regular. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I see you had a little tour of Scotland recently. Oh yeah, that that's um, interesting. I, I do a lot of photography, so I wanted photos, but it doesn't yeah. really happen as I wanted. I spent three day, three nights in Sky, and it was like miserable, <laughs> misty. <laughs> but yeah, you can. But then the week after, they got the um, oh, Northern Lights there. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. How good would that be? Um, yeah. I, know. So, I really want to see them, but yeah. yeah. So what was the paranormal bit like? Because Eileen's well, around. I've seen Eileen put a message up just now, Eileen Murray. So uh, Eileen's, uh, yeah. Um, it, uh, well, it, it was kind of more photography. Um, I did go and stay on Loch Ness, and um, I nipped to – I wanted to interview somebody on the banks of Loch Ness, and he wasn't there. So as I parked, I saw that it mentioned Bellskin House. So I googled it, and it's only just a mile from a campsite. <laughs> so on, the, on the way back to the campsite, I actually drove by and like tried to kind of pull on the driveway a bit, but it got a gate across it. But I just wanted to like pull in a little bit, but single track road, so you can't. So there's a car yeah, yeah. I just wanted a photo, and there's an amazing graveyard across the road as well, which was interesting. But yeah, but, yeah, yeah I'd, um, I met Lois and um, I met a couple of teams as well. Um, we went out investigating and we did get some good stuff. And the thing is about Scotland, there's loads of places you can go. And they're kind of out the way-ish. They're not far away either because there's a lot of castles to go to, which yeah. are easily accessible. And there's no idiots around there, are there? Like, no where idiots. I am. Yeah, but no. where I am in an urban <laughs> area, you go somewhere and then you've got everyone there, aren't you? No, the teenagers with the side room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so with the teams in Scotland, did you learn anything different? Any different techniques or? No, but they've just they can do urban explorer. They can go out, like in in a town city. You kind of restricted. You kind of have to hire locations more. Yeah. Because there aren't that many that you can actually go to, which aren't bordered up or you know you can legally access. Cool. Where in Scotland, there's a lot of castles available, what you can just walk around and then see what you can get. Looks really? Great. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah, so you, like, you think how much we're paying to hire places these days? Uh, so. Well, we're lucky around here because we can get them at one fifty, two fifty. If you know, if you can. I must admit that's pretty good because a place that I want to hire out um, is looking for six hundred pound. From yeah, three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I can't see you now. Can't you? No, can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah that's all right. Yeah, um, yeah, because yeah, we've the if you look at the prisons now, you're talking oh, yeah. 1200 quid, yeah, three, um, three, and what have you, and it's just madness. You've just got how many people have you got to cram in there, yeah, to make you pay, or how much per ticket? I mean, yeah. I don't know. Um, We've got Angela then. Angela's saying if you ever done Dudley Zoo Castle. Um, I haven't, but I would like to. I didn't actually realise it was a zoo. <laughs> I forgot. But 
but, <laughs> but when it came to booking on, I kind of wanted to go, just thinking of like the Dudley Zoo idea. But then, yeah, it's yeah. Been well, like you know. Zoo. Mind you, we got one similar here. It's Marwell House, which is a a big zoo, and in the right um, in the middle of it, there's a like a, yeah, a big old house from 1600s or something. Yeah. Which they still use for weddings and offices, and yeah, that's interesting place. Yeah, we'd like. I'd like to get to Horton Towers. Um, it's sorry, oh, Queen's Park. Oh, it's oh, got oh. a super hotel house right in the middle of it. But yeah. I don't. They're a bit, a, a bit dodgy whether they do paranormal or not because they don't want to associate paranormal where loads of kids go. Yeah. <laughs> so they've got to be careful from the PR perspective. But like, we're all itching to get in there. And um, I did actually do a live when I was in there in the daytime. They, yeah, did they not do um, Most Haunted from there, didn't they? Yeah, I think so, years ago. Yeah. Although well, it was not, I wouldn't class that as a paranormal <laughs> investigation, but. No, it's the, yeah. Yeah. Special, yeah. Okay. I've <laughs> um, got a question here about Shepton Mallet. Anyone been to Shepton Mallet? Have you been? No, I won't pay the price. Ah, uh, okay. So yeah, um, I do know a lot of people that have been. Um, Annie's been a few times. Um, I think it's one of them. Again, it depends who's there and how many people are there. Yeah. Well, I'm so, yeah. I'm, I'm booked on one um, with MJ Dixon, Richard Easter, yeah. and Wes Holman. And oh God, I think it was like May time, but obviously it was cancelled because they couldn't fly over. Yeah, so yeah. It was postponed, I think, till next July. So yeah, I've got two nights there, which it. Happy days. Um, there won't be many people there either. Yeah, so see, it's having the money. That's the thing, isn't it? It's well, yeah, like, you know, with us being less of us, we do pay a bit to go. But then if you're paying yeah. that and you're going to get be able to investigate it properly with serious investigators, rather going yeah, on yeah. a more public event, which can be, you know. It's a long, long time since we saw MJ because Sally was in the um, Daily Mail. Yes, I know. She was on the same show, wasn't she? Good. Yeah, it was MJ and um, the Hazel lady from Horned Horned. Happenings. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Hazel, yeah. That was an so interesting day. We dragged on a bit. I'm going to have to bow out, right? Yeah. Um, but everybody, thanks very much, Bob. It was a pleasure to have your company. Um, and you, thank you. Yeah, yeah Lois has actually got an um, investigation tonight. Yep. Oh, was it? Yeah, uh, yeah. So, I'm gonna be out. So yeah, I'll, just be glad it's yeah. not down there. Well, I, that's true. That's the weather true. down here is atrocious. I'm telling you. Yeah, I can hear it here as well. Yeah. That's the type yeah. of investigations we all should have because that's the type that I love. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> it's it's it. night. <laughs> see ya. Take care. Thank stay you. safe. Bye. Bye. Love. All right. Bye. See you later. Yeah. So um. There's a lot around Edinburgh, that's Eileen Murray. And the thing is, I went to like Ayrshire and there's just so many locations. So I definitely yeah. want to go back and just see because they are free and it's it's great. Um, somebody mentions East Drive. What do you think of it? East Drive isn't overdone. <laughs> yeah. Over, it's one of them. It's, it's now a money making machine to me. Yeah. You know, it's, um, I don't know. Uh, I'd, I'd, have you been... Everyone's saying that the the um, the black monk was actually there because of the person that was there at the time, and they've gone a long time ago. Yeah, and there's no real evidence coming out of there anymore. Uh, is that like um, the ram in? Because to say that was it, John? Yeah. Yeah, because they, you know, the spirits liked him, so it's absolutely crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, like he's I mean, that's a place where everyone gets something. But I'm, yeah. from what I'm hearing now of his drive, it's just so overdone that it's just become not. Um, it, they they've got it booked out sort of nearly every night. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, and if also, you were a spirit, would you want to stay there every night with people who ask you to do the same things over and over? No. No. <laughs> And also, I think there's a copyright thing on photos and videos where they want the copyright. Mm. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, which wouldn't impress me either. Uh, no. Because I do do photos, you know, I, I just put them on my page and that's it. I'll just show them as they yeah. are. 
that Have I said that, you know, I know groups that you can go on their nights, but any photos you take belongs to them. So I won't go on their nights, then. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? You're just like, I don't understand it. Sorry, you're paying a ticket. You're going somewhere. Yeah. You, you, know, yeah. Like... you know, we encourage everyone to bring as much as they can to record everything. You know, we'd yeah. like to see a copy of it if someone catches something and, yeah. and we haven't. But that's as far as it goes. Thing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. As long as the real photos and not ones of what do you think of Orbs? <laughs> well, oh, I don't want to go. There. <laughs> yeah. No, listen, you I will you say this. Aren't you on that one? <laughs> yeah, I will say that I never believed in them at all until one day Sally was telling me that there are some that are spiritual yeah. and I'm like, yeah, whatever, yeah. but I don't believe in it. And then one day we went out in the daytime to a graveyard. Um, oh. It's a graveyard of a mental hospital oh. that has 5,000 people buried basically on top of each other and most of them have no money. So they've only got little oh. iron, iron crosses oh. with numbers on. But anyway, we oh. were there and there's steps that take you from the top level to the bottom. And this, big ball this all come along the bottom level went oh. up through these prickles and holly bushes and then went along the top and then it was followed by a second one and it was like oh my god i'm looking at this thing and i, I can't say no now yeah that's right i've seen this so yeah 99 percent yeah. very very explainable but even 99.5 or 99.9 whatever but there are yeah. some that are different that we try and look out for yeah, um, that's it. <clears throat> yeah, that we, well, and have got a flash, you know, straight away. Yeah. But saying that, um, as that salutation in in Nottingham, round the corner from Robin Hood, uh, which is yeah. a really old pub, and um, I took some photos of guests. So I took a photo with flash, took another one, and then one of the guests says, Spirit, can you step into the photo, please? And I've got a light anomaly on it. Yeah, yeah. And you don't know. And this is it. Like, everyone will go, oh, it's, it's moisture in the air because it was a cave and maybe it was damp. Well, it's a bit, yeah. Um, and also you're using a flash and all that. But all through the night, I didn't get any light anomalies. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? And, but you can't, you know, everyone will go, oh, no, it's, but I don't know. Yeah. So, listen, I mean, you've never, whatever you put out, no one else will believe. And I really think, Proof is going to end up being personal. Because if, if I put out the best ghost photo in the world, someone else will say it's a fake. Oh, gosh, yeah, that's it. You just so, don't, you know. Just do your own thing and believe what you've yeah. found, really. You, you see, yeah. I've, I shared um, on, on this page, and I went the other day and I took three photos down in this cellar thing with a flash. So there you go. Right at the back... The very far back of the photo, which is like right on the bottom of the cellar, which is way down, there's something which could be dust, but yeah, or it could be something, but you don't know, you know, it's on the page and automatically, yeah, yeah. Well, it's awkward, awesome. isn't it? But but the other thing it. is, it, the other thing that annoys me is there are groups out there that I've been to a location and seen the amount of dust that you pick up on infrared cameras. Oh, and then you see God. someone else going live and you got people going, oh, my God, look at the amount of spirit activity. It's not, you know, just be honest about it. It yeah, is. There. Right. There is. But what do you do? Every group, you know, I say everyone runs different and it's up to them what they do, isn't it? Oh, wow. That's cool. That's interesting. But the what real is? spirit cats coming through. Um, saw a paranormal group filming in a graveyard. There were four black cats together. Wow. Yeah. See, that's another thing. Yeah. I have had spirits, animal spirits. Um, we lost four cats here when we first oh, moved wow. in. But they were getting on. And they, yeah, you know, yeah, it happens, um, yeah. It happens. But then the last one, I was actually, I walked out in the dark in the middle of the night and I saw a cat walking around and I thought it was the one that was left but then when I went back to bed he was laying on the bed so it was like okay oh, bless you. yeah so that's another one and also yeah. been been nudged by a dog on an investigation oh 
Yeah. There's a little nudge to say, yeah, I'm here as well. Don't forget me, sort of thing. But. Yeah. I was in the salutation in again, and it was with a team. And the team were going on with all the health and safety and stuff. And I could hear this dog panting right near me. And obviously there wasn't one in front of me. And it was so bloody obvious that there was a dog there. And it's like... Yeah, <laughs> did anyone else hear it though? Yeah, they did. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. It was just, yeah, it was mad. A lot, yeah, a lot just, of times I find individuals pick up evidence that other people don't hear. It, it's just, just one person who was really near me. But everyone yeah. else... Like, you know, you're laughing and they think you're being rude, but actually it's like, well, you know, they're on about and you've got something happening while they're discussing it, which was quite amazing. So yeah. I need mean, Murray I'm in the bed. Um, uh, Eileen Murray has a spirit cat which jumps on a bed. Yeah, and, that's cool. Uh, we've got Angela Whitehouse. Uh, friends had three cats pass, but one remains in the flat with her in spirit, which is yeah. lovely. Yeah, yeah, I've seen this I one think actually. Here as well. So, yeah. Yeah, I sort of think this one that I saw was actually here to collect the one that went a day or two later. So. Oh, wow. You know, it's yeah. not <clears throat> one of them strange things in life, isn't it? It is. You, you know, you just don't know, but anything you, you get is, is fantastic, isn't it? Uh, you try and rationalise it so much all the time. Yeah. Do you know, it's, um, going back to the ITC, Eileen will back us up and tell a lot of other people that watched it. We had this um, radio conversation in Weymouth. And what I want to get to is the conversations we had there with just me and Sally talking to this radio were pretty spot on. But when we went back the next time, and I didn't realise until... Annie was with us and she filmed a, a actually what we were filming or what we put out was the cat ball and the REM pod going off and interacting, but the radio was playing in the background. And you actually heard someone go, it's different people. Oh my gosh. And I was, and I was like, are they actually, you know, they've recognized the fact that me and Sally are here, but with different people. It's just like oh. crazy. So that shows to me a very great intelligence of spirit. And, and with that, if you've got intelligence, you must be alive, mustn't you? Yeah, that's right. Mm. You know, one of the questions we asked the first time, first time round was I'm trying to talk to them about the afterlife and trying to get some answers, though you don't really get any. But I said to him, like, since you've died, how do you live your life? What are you doing now? What is your life about? Are you still learning? And you just had this voice come back with what life? <laughs> oh like, gosh. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's like intelligence responses. And that's yeah. That's all you can ask for, isn't it? If it's intelligent, yeah. you've got the proof. But isn't it great to keep going back to a location <coughs> and picking up picking up a person and yeah. having continued conversation, which is what's happened with Robin Hood. So this is yeah, why yeah, yeah. That's cool. Here. That's cool. But yeah. It's funny. The second time we went back to Weymouth, I went up to the room as we booked in to take the suitcases out. And as I went up the second bit of stairs, I heard what sounded like someone say Bob. So I turned round, but I saw the top door close enough in. Well, maybe it was the hinges, so I had to let it go because I couldn't. So sort because of, it wasn't actually under a controlled. Wow. situation if you like you know, I had yeah. to go yeah maybe it wasn't but it, I'm convinced someone called my name as if to say oh you're back you know what I mean it's, uh, yeah That's cool. so I know you can't see the screen but Eileen Murray said we thought you may have spoken to the future at one point yes we did oh, we cool. never really got any proof of that um, at one point you know it was just the fact that it was so very strange and there was these weird noises that sounded like high speed download like communication being downloaded but it was so fast and weird noises that obviously to us it didn't mean anything so wow so now we need to get a sound engineer to have a look at them at some point yeah I know, I know somebody locally is actually de designing something where you could do evps at different speeds so you can play them at different speeds so something like that where you do get you know, yeah. it down then potentially you could get a conversation. Yeah, it was so high speed, it was crazy. It was ending up, and sometimes 
it sounded like high pitched noises wow. coming through, like almost like a fax machine, you know, that sort of noise. And yeah. um, but sometimes you're listening to it and thinking there's a voice in there. And there's always like there's someone, there's a voice behind it all, but it's all so quick and so short yeah, space of time. It's like they cram loads in and I don't know. Oh, sounds fantastic. I, I need to watch that anyway. I, I need yeah, to yeah. share that, share that to on, a Paranormal Path group. Well, we've got one that's an hour that goes yeah. on. And, you know that's, what I mean? It's, um, that's cool, it's on, it? Yeah, we will do. Well, I'll share yeah, it over. I've got, we've got two. Add, one, yeah. One's cut down to about 20 minutes. Um, still nothing taken out. There's But we've taken like, the boring bits at the beginning and the boring bits at the yeah. end and taken them off. <laughs> Um, I think it's probably best if you listen to the whole thing. Oh, bro, yeah, I want to. Um, yeah. Have you got five more minutes or you've got to go? I've, I've right. got as long as you like. <laughs> right, okay. So I've got a question. Thanks anyway. Um, I've got a question from Keith. So, yeah. Keith Ground, Groundho. Um, has anything ever followed you home? Nothing's ever attached and stayed at home, but I did have one occasion where we went to a local cinema uh, and theatre and it had been a bingo hall but it was built about the 20s but one bar upstairs the spirits in there did not like ladies in there oh uh, yeah uh, for some reason it was the male area yeah. so they were like that uh, yeah as part of the plan we'd done a Ouija board with only women <laughs> um, and it was connecting and there was things but it was a little bit <sighs> Not rude, but it was blunt. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, to bend, don't they? Yeah. So I started joking with the person and sort of going in, going, "Oh yeah, yeah I'll take it. You'd like a laugh and a joke and all this and that." Right, we've got Angela going. So thanks for joining us, Angela Whitehouse. Well, yeah. Bye, Angela. Um, so at the end of the night, after all this connecting with the spirit in this room, come on home. Didn't really. I can't say I noticed anything, but I've gone to bed. Um, woke up, it was still dark, so it was a couple of hours later, and there was a face at the bottom of the bed. Now, the strange thing with this face was you could only see the outline. So you got the outline, the eyebrows, the outline of the nose, the wow. eyes, but it was red. The outline of the hairline was red. The eyes were red. And not filling in, it was just the outlines. And it was there, there a couple of seconds, I shut my eyes, opened my eyes up again, it was gone, never no more attachment to it. It's almost seemed like, well, you've been to my place. I want to pop home and see where you live. Oh, I see. And then it was gone. So, yeah. yeah. Does Diane sort them out anyway? Oh, would, she would. would I she asked her to. <laughs> yeah. yeah but... Would she stop them? <laughs> the trouble is, we encourage it. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> we do encourage it. We sit here and do things and say, you know what I mean? That's another one. We were sat here. Just me and Sally, the back door's locked. It was winter and, and there was just the front room light on. Talking about being able to converse with spirit and hear them as you're talking to them. Like have a real time conversation. And think wonder if anything will ever be in, invented that will allow you to do it, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then out of the kitchen, there was a female voice that just said, Can you hear me? Wow. And it was just like what the hell was that? So I come running out here, make sure there was nobody here, the doors were locked, everything else, and it was only us two there. No one else could have been anywhere near it. Yeah. So one day, yeah, so yeah, we have been followed home, if you like, but not been mm -hmm. attached to as far as I'm aware. I think you would be. You yeah. Do. Yeah, I, like, I've had issues. <laughs> oh, have you? Do, do you protect and ground yourself? I don't. Sally yeah. does do it. Sally, what Sally tends to do because we have guests. That's it. Sally it? will. Sally will do an opening prayer, um, but yeah. not, but not out loud. It's not okay. done. Yeah. Because I'm, I would be worried that some people would think you were doing it for show. Yeah, that's it. You know what I mean. So she will do it. A lot of opening. places do do grounding and protecting, and then they forget at the end, and then everyone falls. Oh my God, am I all right? You know. Yeah, yeah. So Sally does tend to do one, a quiet one, opening and closing. So, oh, um, wow. yeah. Although it's not a big part of our investigation, it is done. Yeah, that's right. Because 
people like the reassurance, don't they, sometimes? They do. Um, sometimes. I don't really think you need it that much, to be honest. I'm, it's like <laughs> I said, yeah, I suppose there is negative out there. If you have good, yeah. you've got bad. It, it's just yin and yang, isn't it? But yeah. I've never really come across anything that's particularly. I've, I've had issues. I've brought stuff home. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, well. I'll show you invited it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think it's because I went in a location and I recognised him. The minute I walked in, I acknowledged him. And yeah. then as the night got more and more, I picked up more of what he was doing, which was revolting. Okay. And then, um, oh God, other people were then getting get in him and then he just followed me and oh is that drained and stuff it's mad but, yeah. <laughs> and it's shocking because I, I went camping and I got some E and F as well and when you're in a tent with 65 mile an hour winds yes. when you realise as soon as you put it up there's no waterproofing left <laughs> wow it wasn't yeah good. <laughs> no, it's, it, yeah it's, you know what I mean it's just so fascinating what you get that I, I did say to John on his first one, once you get bitten by this boat, you will be there as much as you can. And you find most places, or as a team, the guests are generally 50% of people you've met before. That's it. You do get sort of regular people along, don't you? Yeah, so it becomes almost like a little social club, doesn't it? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Because I just like invite friends, I book a location and just invite like experienced paranormal people. So we just yeah. go for it and we let the spirit come in and overshadow us and it's quite crazy. But then I'm like, I have my friend come along and she's like, it freaked her out because she thought, well, what's going on here? Because we didn't <laughs> want to do the table tipping and all that because it was more them just coming out and, oh, dear me, quite taken that they, they actually pushed somebody to the ground you know she's walking and landed on her knees and tried to push her downstairs it was absolutely mad but fantastic yeah. you know we love it <laughs> well it's different yeah it's different. I see i think that maybe I'm that's another thing and that's another thing i think we find with different groups is that they go out looking for different types of evidence mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like like life, isn't it? I mean, you get some That's people nice. that don't want any trouble, so they don't look for it. Other people come out there and they're encouraging yeah. bad behaviour from spirit, if you like. Oh, no, I'm not into that. But <coughs> they are, aren't they? And that's how they do it. And, yeah, it's not the way, if I pass, that I'd like to be spoken to. No. And, no, you not know, at I all. Just, I'll just walk away and all fairness if someone's like that, but yeah, I mean, I, I, someone did start not too bad, but they were starting to goke people on one of ours. And I know mm. Sally took him to one side and said, Listen, if that was your granddad being spoken to like that, you wouldn't be happy. Yeah, so just it's just respect, isn't it? Really, yeah, I've got Lynn Chisome and Heidi Spicer, they're both hooked now. So <laughs> yeah, Lynn, Lynn, we've only met once, but she's coming out with us at the weekend, and mm -hmm. Heidi's just gone paranormal crazy. Oh wow, just like me. Then. <laughs> it's just brilliant. You know, it's just one thing what like just changes your opinion. That's it. You've just got to get out. Yeah. Oh, I this mean... is lovely. Uh, Mark, Mark Kubner, thanks for watching. Um, we know you're honest, and nothing is for show. Just lovely, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I I don't see any point in putting out fake evidence. No, why, why do it? You know, yeah. like we can all act a play. So why even try? Just go out. But the thing is, though, it would ruin the night for me because what I'm out there for is to try and get exactly. It's the proof of at the end of the day, it's a comfort to know that life goes on. This isn't yeah. it. You know, at the end, you you get born. You go to work for 50 percent, you know, over 50 percent of your life. You pay your taxes, you die and then you're gone. You know, that doesn't work for me. There has to be more. There's got to be a reason. Yeah, that's right. Well, oh, these comments and you can't even see them. Oh, dear. <laughs> Heidi Spicer watching Keep It Real on Sunday night. Got me hooked. I love it now. Um, Eileen Murray. Um, Bob and Sally Ann are among the most honest, genuine souls around, really. Ah, oh, good girls. So, uh, Keith, 
Greenhill, uh, where are you based, Bob? We're in the New Forest. Oh, beautiful. Down on the South Coast, yeah. We're just, um, I suppose our biggest, our nearest big city is Southampton. Yeah. Um, but we're, we're in a tiny little country lane, just 15 places just around us. And just look out the window and you've got fields and trees oh, and wow. horses. And it's, yeah, yeah. We, best thing we've ever done. Wow, fantastic. That would be my sort of, yeah. I'm just stuck in the town and I don't think, you know, but what well, it is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Life is what it is. You just make the yeah, most of what it. you've got, you don't just you? Just really? make the best of it. Like Keith is um, in Exeter. So All right. it's not too far to travel, is it? No, no. We've, still, we've been down to Exeter in uh, there was a big park. We stayed at the, just off the motorway in the Premier Inn or something where yeah. there was parks and castles and, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. decent That's little place. Yeah. I went to a Russian restaurant there. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I went to a business meeting, yeah. So we've got Susan Williams coming on the 16th, and she's bringing a newbie with her. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Well, it's a new venue to us, to be honest. We It's a 400-year-old pub or yeah. hotel, and it's, um, yeah, it'll be different. Nice one. Yeah. So we're trying to get to the areas that we have no idea what the activity is going to be. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Um, hopefully, we'll find something. But you know, I, I think we've... you will because I think everywhere has got something. Yeah, it's just finding it, isn't it? Just what level? Yeah. Yeah. You know, when it out, but with that one, there's a little bit of food because the pub do food, so we've oh, uh, yeah. ordered ordered them a little break halfway through so they can have a little nosh and. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, not too much though. We did do oh, one. Gosh, no. <laughs> <laughs> We've done a paranormal um, lessons. We were going to teach people the paranormal in a hotel and locally, and it included a roast dinner. <laughs> but as soon as we walked in, the equipment was going off, and then people were like, "Wow, what's going on here?" As soon as we had dinner, everyone was like, "I can't be bothered now." Oh no. He was so full up and so tired. He was like, oh, I can't do it anymore. But I had a worse yeah. experience. I went to sort out my friend's um, son's house. So it's about three or four of us. And they cooked us a curry. Yeah. <laughs> so like two hours afterwards, like, you know, your stomach and everything else. Yeah. And it wasn't good. And oh, the noise dear. certainly went <laughs> spiritual. <laughs> it only so yeah. good, but yeah. No, you could have blamed it as a demon or something, couldn't you? Yeah, <laughs> it but... was a demon, weren't it? Blimey. <laughs> yeah, you don't have much sense of smell, but one of them comes out. Jeez. Oh, dear. Demon, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, thanks so much anyway. I'd love to speak to you again and hopefully... Yeah, so we're, listen, we're always about, so if you ever get to a point where you're stuck, give us a shout. Oh, God, I will do, yeah. It's just been wonderful, it really has. And thank you so much for finding me on the internet, all those... Well, couple of years uh, isn't it now and yeah wow. well i'm glad i'm glad it's helped you along your way really oh yeah yeah it's kind of uh, you know i thought well why you know you you've contacted me out the blue and i was going through a particularly bad time at the at that that time yeah it was a really bad time and sort of helped with my confidence as well because i think when you asked me i was with a team but then when it happened i wasn't with the team anymore it's like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> things happen That's all right you know? Yeah, sometimes but, you're better off individual, sometimes you're better well, off that's team. It. Yeah, I can spread my wings and do what I like now, and that's it. And I've got Lois as well, and I've met her, yeah. you know, I went to Scotland to meet her recently, and yeah, fantastic. But but thank you good. so much for coming on and talking to us. It's been brilliant. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Jacqueline. It's been a pleasure. Oh, bless you. And thanks, everyone, for watching. It's been lovely talking to you. And we do put other shows on here on a Thursday night between 7 and 8. I've got Are You Haunted on soon. We've got Colin Connor on. And we have different people around from the community, really. So, yeah, yeah cool. Listen, before I go, Jacqueline, before I go, we were talking about that hotel in Weymouth. Yeah. Right. If anyone who's watching is interested, we've got weekends available January and February for people yeah. to come and experience and it's going to be a two night thing because we've got that and we've also got a 400 year old pub wow. in Weymouth that both of them 
have got an extensive report of hauntings. Awesome. Um, yeah, so if they go on our Facebook Ask page, yeah. contact Sally, then she'll give her give them all the details. I mean, Lynn Chisholm's coming down in February. Um, we're going to keep them down to six to eight people for, oh, for a weekend to try and make it as real as we can. Yeah, I'll try and get down, but probably not jump fair because um, it might be a Listen, bit tough. Yeah, there, no, but... that's fine. It's out there, though. If people but, yeah, are watching tonight or going to watch a replay, want to get in touch with Sally, and then they're more than welcome because we'd love to show people what we've experienced because it's wow. like, it can blow your mind what you see down there. Oh, it certainly can, yeah. Um, so Lynn can't wait, Lynn Chisholm. And Heidi, it's keep it real, spiritual and paranormal events. But I will share, I will share it on here at the end, Keith. So you'll actually find it. So yeah, I Good will put it on here. And um, yeah. yeah, my my, I have a group called Paranormal Path. So if you would like to join that, that'd be lovely. And I will share this on. And also, if we can share the Weymouth on there as well, I will. Yeah, it'd be excellent. Yeah, and also yeah. if you can do our YouTube page because. People I will, will see a lot of evidence from Weymouth on there. That yeah, because I really want to watch yeah. this Weymouth. So, yeah, I'll I'll try and link that up for you. Yeah, that's brilliant. Okay. So All right, then, thanks, everyone, thanks for band. Look after yourselves, everyone. Take care, Bye. Jackie. Bye Cheers. now. Thank you.